All right, we're excited today because we have two speakers today. We have our own beloved Tisha, <laughs> and we have our beloved Ricardo. And Ricardo and your family's here, aren't they? No? Daniel's here. Daniel's here. Okay. Hi, Daniel. We're excited you're here. Patricia's at Redencion this morning. Okay. Oh, she's at home. Oh, I'm sorry. She's not feeling good. Anyway, we are pretty excited to have our two guest speakers today. And so I'm going to pray over them, but I'd like you all to be just putting out your hand and pray over them as well. Why don't you guys come a little closer because I, my buzzer will buzz. You know, if I get too close, they'll, they'll zap me and tell me I can't. Don't walk over the line. <laughs> all right, Father, we come by the power of your name. And we're just so thankful, Lord, this morning that you have gifted Tisha and Ricardo with not just uh, a love for you, but the ability to speak. Father, we ask that you would release your word through them today. Lord, that you would release your anointing through their words, Lord. Your anointing, Lord. Let the words that come out of their mouths not only be pleasing to your heart, Lord, but they would can't contain the fire of heaven. And Father, I ask that you would open our ears, prepare our hearts to hear what you have to say today, Lord. This isn't what Tish and Ricardo have to say. This is what you have to say, Lord. And let us be so attentive to your very voice as it speaks to our spirits. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right. Ricardo's first. All right. Here you go, sir. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to be here once again and see our, our friendly faces. Uh, uh, we really miss you. Uh, I was here for whoever doesn't know who I am. Uh, I was here for more than three years, uh, 20, 2020, 2021, 2023, uh, two, and part of the uh, 2023. So back in, uh, in August uh, last year, uh, I started uh, a new challenge, you know, for the community of Marysville uh, to start working with the, uh, uh, the Hispanic people in the, uh, the city. So it was a feeling from Pastor Gene, and, and we, we knew it was coming. I was like Jonas. I was trying to hide in from, from God, you know, to do what I supposed to do, right? But at the end, I had to do it. So uh, I just wanted to share what is, what is going on in, in Redención the last uh, few months. Uh, I can tell you we started uh, around the uh, August time. Uh, the, first, the, first, the first steps we, we had, it, it was like, we started with meetings with the, uh, the, the guy that was running the a group, uh, brother uh, Sam, uh, Samuel Perez and his wife. They were having a, a, a group like every week and they rented a, a place and they had like uh, 20, 25 people attending uh, this group. And then uh, pastor uh, met him and then he put us together and God bring us the same spirit, and now we're running the uh, Redención Agape, thanks to the support of Agape Marysville. So we are part of you. So we're proud of that, because God is using you, uh, us, using you to bless us. So on September, uh, we, we were having like, an average about uh, 35 uh, people in, in the in that place, and then later we we moved to to the new uh, um, how do you call it uh, Victory Center, uh, and since then uh, we started like the, the first service around 80 90 people, and we're still running around that average. Because, you know, the, the first service, everybody's coming, and then they leave, you know? But then, like, time by time, they started, we started, like, 
with 45, and then we have right now around 80 people, sometimes more, sometimes a little less, but it is for the glory of God. God knew what is going to happen in this place. God knew that there is a lot of needs from the people that somebody needs to take care of them. And we got good, good families, so... Um, I have some some notes, uh, so I need to make sure I, I follow the uh, my my notes to make sure I not jump to another another things. So we have uh, these uh, uh, different groups. Uh, the uh, little kids before we had like five uh, kids, you know, during the uh, Bible study. Now they have over 10, 15 kids uh, average, like every Sunday. And uh, we also, uh, we open a, a pray uh, time, you know, on Wednesday, every other Wednesday. Uh, you are invited uh, to come. And it's been so, so amazing, you know, people, uh, some things are happening, like miracles and things like that, that only God can do in the, in the uh in the minds and the hearts of the the people, and uh, I promise it is it is it is a lot a lot of things that you never talk is is gonna happen right like like if you ask me hey, hey have you thought that you're gonna be uh, preaching and 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 working with uh, Hispanic people in the Syrian Marysville I, I was started but. At the end, God got his plans. Uh, we got almost 20 years in, or around 20 years in, in Marysville, and we were, we always were asking, hey, what are we doing in, in this city? We asked God, you know, but uh, we, is, we were uh, working in, in, uh, in Spanish church in, in Hillier for 15 years, and then we moved to Agape, that is our latest blessing you know like we we had it you know this is our first american church that we visited to a state for more than a month <laughs> so thanks god for for that uh, and also uh since we have new uh believers in the, in redemption we created a a, a class it is Sunday morning, 8.30 a.m., and we have an average like 10 to 15 people every, every Sunday coming to learn what they need to know about a, a new believer, about what the responsibility is, what is, what is a Christian, and all that good uh, information they they supposed to have. So we have this, this group. Uh, what I want to focus a little bit more, more time it is, we opened it like two months ago, uh, a group of teenagers. You know, teenagers, it's not easy to, to deal with them. So I was uh, the person that was taking care of them. So of course I have Daniel, he's uh, 13. So I decided to run this group. I said, let, let, let's start it. Let's see what, what is going to happen. And then we uh, uh, asked the, uh, the families and the parents in, at a church that if they want to bring uh, the, the kids. And we started the, this uh, type of uh, uh, class on Fridays, every other Friday. But the, uh, there is a lot of things going on with them. So the first class, it was 10 teenagers in a church of the 70 people. It was like around 15, 20% of, the, of them at the class. Then the next, the next class, it was 15. And now I have 22 on the list. 22 kids, it is about 25% of the church are teenagers in class. But it's, it's not ended on, on that. The kids are really hungry of the word of God. They are asking. They, they feel 
thirsty. They want to know more and more and more. And you know, we starting, we started with 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 went with uh, one title, obedience. And we have almost two months with the same class, obedience. We're talking about the the word of God, of course, but more of anything, the understanding of word of God. And how to pray, not, not only pray, how to pray, what is the correct way to pray? Because sometimes we pray because we learn it to pray, not because it's coming from the heart. We are teaching the, the, the kids how to preach from the heart, not from how you learn it from the pastor, from the leader. It's learn, it, learn that from the Word of God and then take it out and speak the Word of God through your prayers. Also, we, we, we've been uh, talking also about the uh, discipline, how the, uh, the, the people that have good discipline, it can be, uh, it, it, it can be uh, a great man or woman for the uh, king of God. And not even that, they can share the, the word of God and they can be big uh, leaders and and. And God is going to use them that a great tool for his glory. And they, 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 they wanted to do that. that. I have kids that they would like now to preach the word of God. In, in this age, it is, this is not normal for a teenager, you know, like this kind of feeling. But I have a great inspiration on, on them because I was it, it was a challenge to me. You say work with teenagers is not going to be easy. But God gave, uh, gave me the, the way to, to do it. And one of the things that I, I always uh, point out is the integrity of, uh, of each of them, how God is looking on each of them, how they need to be like a good man or woman of or kid of God. And it is amazing how they are doing it because one of the tasks that I gave to them it is to learn a verse of the Bible every every time that we have a class. And most of them, they have already learned it, like five tests. And they come in also to the church on Sunday. I, I, they, they tell the church, which ones they, they have on their, their memory. So, so they learn the, the Word of God, and they, they take time to, to uh, express, you know, what they learn from, from that Word of God. So it is, it is great because one of the, uh, the, uh, the teenagers, this, this girl, she uh, memorized a psalm, and she said it, the entire psalm, you know, for the glory of God. When, when you see that, it is an inspiration for, for us as, a, as adults, right? Because it, when we are part of the uh, an army, for example, you know that, that you, you, need, you have responsibilities and you know that you need to be a, a obedient, and you need to be disciplined to do what they ask us to do. But when we, we have a, 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 a group or a, a, an army for, for God, that should be supposed to be better than, than that. Because we have a better moral, better thinking to, to love the people, to give the, uh, the word of God to, to other people to try to put the seed and, and those lives can be saved by the power of God. So that's our responsibility. And let me tell you, like, God is going to do something with these kids. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. And God is preparing the uh, next generations because they need to preach. They need to be well prepared to preach the word of God in a different way because we live it in a peace right now, but we don't know what is going to happen soon in the world. So we need, as a parent, 
to get prepared and then start working with our kids because they are the new teachers, the new preachers, the new uh, uh, tools of God for this world. So let's, let's do it, let's keep it uh, doing that. So from the uh, Redención, uh, I can tell, uh, thank you for all your great support we, we, we've been having so far uh, in a different ways. And based on in Matthew 6 from 19 to, to 21, what is talking about uh, invest on the, uh, on the uh, kingdom of, of the Lord. So you started doing that, but not only that is going to be a bless for you, it's going to be a bless for this city, it's going to be a bless for this uh, state, it's going to be a bless for this country. And I would like to say that the fire is, is getting starting in Marysville, Ohio. And you and I are part of that amazing job that is coming soon. So be prepared, church, to, to somehow help on this. And not, not only that, get involved on the, on the, uh, the work of the, uh, the kingdom. You have responsibilities. You are part of the army. If you're not part of the army, you're not going to take those tools. But if you are part of the army, you're going to... Stand up and start fighting against the devil because he was beaten by the cross, by Jesus Christ in the cross. That's the way we need to think about it, and we, that's the way we need to, to still uh, fighting on that. So uh, with this being uh, said, so uh, the uh, Redención Agape, it is uh, it's having a lot of more uh, uh, plans, you know, for, for the next months. We're going to work with the ladies and we're going to with the, with the men and we're going to try to have at least a uh, uh, meeting uh, every three months or, or so, so we can gather together and, and share and know each other and, and, and also... Uh, work on the uh, the next plans for for the year uh, in the end of uh, may we're gonna have a kind of a retreat like one day we're going down there and we're gonna have bap baptisms for uh, I, i'm thinking about 10 people that is gonna be bap baptized in in a, a back creek so that's what is happening in redención so um I was not planning any, anything of this, but God have it all in his mind. He got it for years, for decades, and I, I didn't know, but I, I'm so glad to be, I'm, I'm so blessed to be part of this, this, uh, the, this process, the entire process. And, and I'm planning also in the near future, uh, meet again as a agape and redención, and then have a little participation from the teenagers. So you can also be blessed, and, and you can see by yourself that there's something is going on with them. I, I promise they're going to have something to share with you that time. So be ready for, for that. Uh, thank you again uh, for all the... Uh, the hard work uh, that you've been doing at the uh, Victory Center. Uh, the uh, place is looking a lot better, and I can feel the, uh, the environment when, when you get there. Uh, at the beginning, it was like a, a, a place empty, but now when you get it in there, you start feeling something is going on in that place. It is not only redemption. It is also agape that they're having the Bible uh, uh, courses and some other activities. We are using that place for the glory of God. And the people from the side, I don't know, across the street, there is a place that we don't like too much. <laughs> they're hearing about something. I got a guy one day in the place uh, getting into the place and asking, hey, what is going on here? 
because this used to be an ugly place and now looks beautiful. He was a little drunk, to be honest, but we took advantage of that and then we'd say, this is a new church. We are talking about the Word of God and you are welcome to here to come and visit us. So that's the last part I want to end it. Uh, and I'm going to give you also a reflection about Ephesians 6, that we need to be prepared with the, the, the armor of God. We need to be prepared because God is going to do greatest things. So be ready. Thank you, church. Once again, thanks, thanks for everything you've been doing for, for us and, and the support that we've been having all these weeks and months. God bless you all. Thank you for that wonderful, amazing update, Ricardo. Um, there was a statement a few weeks ago that somebody said, if we wait till we feel like we've got it all together to do ministry, then nothing ain't going to happen. And that's so true, because 19 years ago when we started this um, church, I know my husband and I, we did not feel ready. Even though we did trainings and whatnot in school and preparation, you just don't feel ready. So thank you for your obedience, Ricardo, in doing that. Um, what an impactful difference you're making in our community. So thank you for saying yes. All right, so I was asked to do a love talk. And um, if you don't know what a love talk is, it's something you're passionate about. And it's typically pretty short, so like 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so before I begin, I would like for you to look at your neighbor, and I want you to say to your neighbor, please say hallelujah and amen every now and then. Go ahead. Say to your neighbor. All right. Say to your other neighbor, this sermon ain't going to be boring, so hang on and don't look at your phone. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to start off with a question. Why do some people think that being a Christian or Christianity is boring? And why would anyone want to wait to make things right with Jesus at their deathbed and not be in relationship before that and experience Jesus here on this earth, even before heaven? This life without Jesus is hard but experiencing Jesus is fabulous. So many people go through so many difficult things, and why would anyone want to not have Jesus carry them through life is hard for me to imagine. There are people that are dealing with cancer right now. We have a lady in our church who just finished radiation. We have another lady that is going through radiation now. We've had people that, are, that have lost loved ones um, that are dealing with that even now. So what my passion comes down to is simply this, an abundant life before heaven, which is the here and now. Don't just wait for heaven to experience all God has for us. God has given us an amazing gift called life here on this earth, so please take care of it. Now, I'm going to say some sh something very shocking, especially since what Ricardo said a, a little bit ago, but coming from a preacher's wife, I love bars. <laughs> Salad bars, nacho bars, dessert bars, and candy bars. What were y'all thinking? <laughs> All right. Do you see this plate? Now, when I go to a salad bar, I am sad if they hand me this little plate. How am I supposed to put 99 toppings on my salad? It makes me sad when they hand, hand me that plate. No, thank you. When someone, um, how am I supposed to do all that? Okay, so that's what God thinks about you too. He has so much for us. He wants to give us this big plate. Abundance actually means over and beyond more than we can expect or imagine. And he probably wants us to have more than even this big plate. Now, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. 
I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. That is what Jesus said, and you can find it in John 10, 10. Now, I have a few points. I could have 99 like the salad toppings because God offers so much, but I figured my husband would not appreciate that as that sermon would be long, so I'm going to bless you with four points. Point number one, to have an abundant life, it starts with our foundation. Our foundation affects our belief systems. Some of you that that were ILC, that may sound familiar. Do you know we have an average of 45 thoughts every single minute? That leads up to 50,000 to 70,000 thoughts per day. Now, me, that's hard to relate because I often sit like this, and when someone goes, what are you thinking? I'm like, nothing. Like, seriously, I'm not thinking of anything. Like, I'm good at going blank. So when I hear that, I'm like, it must be for all you ADD people because there ain't no way I can come up with that many thoughts in a minute. But that's the average person. So make sure what we hear, what we see, what we believe about ourselves, others, and God is truth. When, what you say in the mirror, what are you saying about yourself over and over is what you are going to believe. Our thoughts, they do affect us. You think that the five to ten minutes of Bible reading you may do and the worship songs on the way to work affects us? Absolutely. But the two hours of TV or being on social media or whatever music you may listen to or being on your phones looking at stuff doesn't affect us? It absolutely does. And that's why we got crafty people doing subliminal messages for advertising commercials. They know that we may even subconsciously Get us through our thoughts to buy their products. There are a lot of untruths out there. Copycats of the Bible, copycats of God, copycats of Christianity. And we have got to study the word of God, memorize it, and build our foundation on it. There is a reason. Even when we retire someday from our jobs, however old that may be, we don't retire from the Bible. We don't retire from church. We don't retire from small group or learning about the Lord Gene's probably going to drag me to conferences even to age 99. Like, for real. We are not to stop learning. We need to make sure our foundation is filled with God's truths. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. That comes from Matthew 6, 33. Point number two. To have an abundant life, we need to surrender to Jesus all of our selfish desires. By humbling ourselves, repenting of our sinful nature, and throwing it away, it leads us to being that humble, obedient servant that he desires for us. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Creature, the old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. 2 Corinthians 5.17. The opposite of being humble is what? Haughty, proudful. The opposite of unselfishness is... Selfishness. The opposite of having a servant's heart is an unserving person. The opposite of surrender is being rebellious. Who would you rather hang out with, guys? You know, the moment I need Jean was the one for me. I was asking someone, how do you know when the person is the right person? And that person said, well, does he make you a better person? And in that instant, I was like, of course He made me want to have a relationship with them because he was the type of person who made me feel safe and secure and all those things that I just talked about. He was the good, he was, he made me a better person. So be that person who wants to make someone else's life better. You will find great joy in that. Here are a couple of my favorite verses. Psalm 1611, you make known to me the path of light. In your presence, there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I love that verse. Being around the right people can bring joy, but even more than that is the presence of Jesus. His joy is like nothing else. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us. Ephesians 3.20. Walking in forgiveness is my third point. Now, That doesn't sound like very much fun if you're a Christian, or even if you're not, but walking in forgiveness is very vital. My favorite F word in the English language is the word freedom. 
You are a captive of the person you hold bitterness to until you forgive. I realize that this can be a process, but this is necessary towards your health. Do you realize that a lot of people's health problems in today's world stems from bitterness? I've been around people who look like they are 65 when they are actually only 45. Holding grudges can cause stress levels, which causes insomnia, high blood pressure, muscle tension and pain, accelerated aging, weak immune systems, digestive issues, and beyond. I know someone who didn't talk to a family member for 10 years due to a simple misunderstanding, and now they are best friends. They lost 10 years of their kids growing up together in family reunions, all for a lie they believed about the other, till one day one of them called them up and said, hey, can we get together and talk? They realized that there was a big misunderstanding, and they asked each other for forgiveness. Life is too short for that. The most important reason to forgive comes from Matthew 6, 14 to 15. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Uh Uh-oh, yes. If we want to see our heavenly Father, we do need to forgive. I received so much healing and freedom and abundant living when I decided to forgive those who hurt me in my past. And that is why I'm so passionate about this one and the word freedom. My last point, number four, to have an abundant life, we need to experience the Holy Spirit and be empowered. The Holy Spirit is who changes us and gives us boldness, confidence, freedom, joy, repentant heart, and on and on. The first part of Acts 1 verse 8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The Holy Spirit helps believers in various ways. One, through salvation. Salvation through the power of the Holy Spirit. Believers are saved, filled, sealed, and sanctified. Revelation. The Holy Spirit reveals God's thoughts and guides believers into all truth. Strength. The Spirit helps Christians in our weaknesses. Intercession. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us, for believers. Conviction. The Holy Spirit convicts people of sin and righteousness and guidance. The Holy Spirit assists in prayer and reveals the truth of Scripture. Now, I showed you some plates earlier, but here's a broken plate, okay? There's three pieces to this plate. People break, just like plates. Human hearts break. Agreements and vows break. Relationships break. Faith can be broken. Promises, hope, they can be broken. Bodies are broken. Trust is broken. As families and communities break apart, we are broken and we suffer. But guess what? We share in Christ's sufferings that we may know him and his sufferings. We share in the privilege of trusting. We share in the privilege of suffering. The sacrifices are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart. It is wounds that knit us back together. Did you hear that? It is wounds that knit us back together. God can heal whatever you are going through. He can glue your plate back together. He can glue your families back together, your life, your marriage, your relationships, faith. Quit looking at the other person, by the way, like it's their fault. Look at yourself. If you want the Holy Spirit to change anything, it may start with your broken attitude. If he can fix anything, he miraculously can fix you. Thank you. Sometimes that's the only thing that needs fixed in your life is you. It's not the other person, so we got to quit pointing the finger. Look in the mirror and ask the Holy Spirit to show you the truth. We need to get out of that victim mindset or being offended about everything. Come on, church. It's someone else's fault. Well, I'd be a better wife if my husband wasn't so, you know, this or that. I would be growing more spiritually if my church was perfect. I would be a better employer if my employees weren't so dumb. I'd be a better student if my teacher wasn't so stupid. I've heard that one. I would not have gone to jail if the laws weren't so stupid. Like I said, the Holy Spirit can empower us to be the people he has called us to be. And there are some powerful powerful verses in Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. 
Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace on him and by his wounds we are healed. He didn't die so that we could stay in our misery. He didn't die so we couldn't experience freedom. He died so we could have abundant life and eternal life. And the last and well, well, most well-known Bible verse there is, is John 3, 16. Worship team, can you come forward and play? And you can even recite this with me if you know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. An abundant life comes from following God's ways, pursuing holiness, and seeking to be more like him. God created us to want more. But which kind of more will we seek? Abundance in worldly things or an abundant life with Jesus? The more we desire God, the more abundant our life will be. So let's go after God with all we got and enjoy this place called life, knowing that eternal life is right around the corner. Amen. I would like for our ministry team to come forward, um, if you are on, and let's just take this moment to... Just examine our hearts. Um, if you need prayer, if you need your life put back together, um, if you need a marriage put back together, um, whatever it is you're going through and you want prayer, there are going to be people on this side and this side who will pray with you. And so let's just take that time. Maybe you need a healing. Um, we can pray for that as well. So let's just take this time and... Um, Lord, I just thank you so much for your love. We thank you that you have given us an abundant life if we choose to do so with you, Lord. We thank you for the joy that you give. We thank you that you fix and restore us to wholeness again. And so, God, we are just asking that you do that even this morning, that nobody leaves here feeling like they've just are broken, but you can glue their plate back together, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just come forward if you need prayer.